Module 8, Aruba Instant Roaming. In this module we will look at roaming L2 versus L3, roaming within a cluster, the creation of the home AP table, roaming between clusters, roaming back home to your home cluster, and roaming load balancing. Roaming from one IP to another IP is done by the client device. When error rates exceed a set threshold, the client associates to a new IP with a stronger signal. The objective of the IP network is to keep the client in the same subnet, so the client retains the same IP address. Doing so in a single virtual cluster is simple since all IPs advertise the same SSID and clients are placed in the same subnet. No configuration is needed for roaming within a virtual cluster. However, if the client is roaming to an IP that is part of another virtual cluster and roaming is still desired, then the home AP table must be configured. L2 roaming. L2 roaming or cluster roaming is when a client roams from one IAP to another IP in the same cluster. In this example, the client has roamed from IAP2 to IAP3. Upon receiving the new client, IAP3 will send a session request as a broadcast in its cluster. IAP2 will reply with a session response message giving IAP3 all of the session information on this client. IP3 is now the new home AP for this client. All ACL IDs and current active sessions are passed in session reply messages. Roaming typically happens in less than a second with no ping loss. No configuration is needed for cluster roaming. The HAP table, home AP table. Roaming to another cluster is also referred to as L3 roaming. This requires a home AP table. These tables will tell the IPs what other IP cluster supports the client subnet. The HAP table may be dynamically created with the mobility domain discovery procedure or manually added. In this example above, the client associated to an SSID in cluster 1 gets an IP address 10.1.11.151 then roams to another IP cluster. The client is now in cluster 2. The HAP table created in cluster 2 will tell the IPs what other VCs exist and what subnets they support. This will show that the client is associated with cluster 1. In this example above, the client associated to the SSID in cluster 1 and got an IP address 10.1.11.151. The client roamed over to cluster 2 and will retain the same IP address. To configure your L3 roaming settings, click on the system link and from there select the option to show advanced services. Then click on the L3 mobility tab. Here you can add the VC IP addresses for the clusters where you want L3 roaming. You can also add in the subnets belonging to the various clusters. If there is a lot of L3 roaming from edge IAPs, then you can turn on load balancing. We will explain this process further along in this module. You can set up dynamic discovery with the help of a DNS server. When a new cluster of IAPs is brought into service, the virtual controller will send a DNS query to see if there are other IAP clusters. The DNS server must be configured with the Aruba Dash VC with the IP addresses of each IP subnet where roaming is required. This will automatically update the HAP table. Let's take a look at an example of this process. The DNS is pre-configured with the IP addresses of all IP clusters. 
The new cluster VC3 is now in service. VC3 sends a DNS query asking for a resolution of Aruba-VC. The DNS server will reply with all the configured VCs in its list. VC3 will then communicate with the other VCs and will initiate a client subnet exchange. Once the client exchange is done, then all of the VCs will update their HAP tables with the newly discovered VCs and the client subnets. Client Intercluster Roaming Through the next four slides, we will look at an example of intercluster L3 roaming. There are nine steps to complete this process. A client roams from an IP in another cluster. In this example, a device on IP3 in cluster VC1 roams to IP55 in cluster VC2. Reauthentication and the four-way handshake will still happen because it is still a 802.11 event and from both IP and client perspective, this is a fresh association. IP55 will send out a session request broadcast to all IPs in its cluster. Since none of the IPs in the cluster know anything about this client, the session request message will time out. At this point, the new IP will send a message to all VCs in the other clusters. The VC uses the HAP table for the virtual controller list to complete this process. The home VC should respond with the IP address of IP3. If there is a failure in communication and the request or the reply is lost, then the IP will place the client in an L3 roam pending state. By inspecting the DHCP IP ARP packets, the IP identifies the home cluster network using the IP address in the HAP table and sends a message directly to the relevant BC. The home BC will reply either from the broadcast or through direct communication and will identify the home IP in the home cluster. IPs send a unicast message to each VC 15 times. If this times out, and by then if the AP sees an IP packet from the client, a unicast packet is sent to the correct VC another 15 times. The new IP, now referred to as the foreign AP, or FAP, will send a HAP request to the home AP. The home AP will reply with a HAP acknowledgement, acknowledging it is the home AP of the client. The foreign AP, IEP55, will now create a GRE tunnel to the home AP, IEP3. Once the tunnel has been created, then all the data traffic will be routed to the home AP and vice versa. If more than one client has roamed between the home AP and the foreign AP, they will all use the same GRE tunnel. There is only one tunnel created between a foreign AP and a home AP, regardless of the number of roamed clients. We are going to review an example of a new client roaming over the next four slides. This is a 10-step process. Client 1 has already roamed to the second cluster and has already established a GRE tunnel between the home IP3 and the foreign IP55. A new client, Client 2, roams to the foreign IP55. IP55 sends out a broadcast in its own cluster. Since there is no reference to Client 2 in Cluster 2, the session request times out. The foreign AP55 sends out a message to all VCs in other clusters to find the client information. Cluster 1 VC1 replies with a known client message and directs the foreign IP55 to IP3 and not IP2. This is done since IP55 already has a GRE tunnel to the IP in VC1. 
the foreign IP will only create one GRE to any IP in another cluster. The GRE tunnel already exists, but we still need to advise IP3 of this new device. IP55 sends a HAP request to IP3, and IP3 sends a HAP reply to IP55. Since IP3 is not the original owner of Client2, it will broadcast a session request within its cluster. IP2 replies with a session response with the session information. IP3 is the new home IP for Client2. Client roams L3, then roams L2. We will now look at an example of L3 roaming and then L2 roaming. We will review the nine steps over the next four slides. A client had roamed previously between cluster 1 IP3 to cluster 2 IP55. There is a GRE tunnel between these two IPs. The client now roams again from IP55 to IP99 in the same VC2 cluster, L2 roaming. The new foreign IP99 will send out a session broadcast asking about the client. The foreign IP55 will send a session reply as well as the IP address for the home agent IP3 to IP99. IP55 sends a client delete to IP3. IP3 replies to IP55 with a client delete acknowledge. If no other clients are using the GRE tunnel, then it is deleted. The new foreign IP99 sends a HAP request to the home IP3. The home IP3 replies to IP99 with the HAP response. A new GRE tunnel is created between the home IP3 and foreign IP99. Rome Home. Now we will look at the process of roaming back to the home cluster. First, a client had roamed from cluster VC1 on IP3 to cluster VC2 on IP99. Now that same client roams back again to VC1 on IP4. Next, the new IP4 sends out a session broadcast asking about the client. IP3 sends a session reply to IP4 with the session information. IP3 sends a client delete to IP99. IP99 replies to IP3 with a client delete acknowledgement. If no other clients are using the GRE tunnel, then it is deleted. Edge roaming. Over the next three slides, we will look at an example of edge roaming issues and solutions. First, many clients roam from VC1 IP3 to various IPs in cluster VC2. An example of a meeting breaking up and people returning to their own offices. The IPs will broadcast a session request, then time out, and send out VC fine clients. VC1 will reply with the home IP of all these clients, IP3. Then, Jerry tunnels are built back to IP3 from various IPs in VC2. This may cause many GRE tunnels to terminate to a single IP. This is an issue. You can prevent this by turning on load balancing. Once you've enabled load balancing, then step three will change to the following. VC1 will reply to the home IPs of all the clients, but will use a round robin system. The IPs in cluster VC1 will broadcast a session request and IP3 will reply 
with a session response. GRE tunnels are built back to various IPs in cluster VC1. Let's take a look at an example of a roaming client. Tracy has an iPhone 5 and was on cluster 2 with an IP address of 10.1.81.3. Tracy roamed to another location where we have cluster 1. Normally, all users in cluster 1 would get an IP address of 10.1.91 range. For example, Richard started in cluster 1 and has an IP address of 10.1.91.4. However, Tracy is in cluster 1 but retained her IP address from cluster 2. This is a successful roam. In this module, we looked at the differences between L2 roaming and L3 roaming. We saw how roaming within a cluster takes place. We saw the two ways a HAP table can be created, manually or dynamically, using DNS. We saw roaming between clusters. We saw roaming back home. And we saw roaming load balancing in case of an office meeting and everybody going to different locations afterwards. Thank you.